So Tamara, thank you so much for joining us today. You've been a long time volunteer with Epilepsy Foundation New England. Um, tell us what brings you to serve our mission at Epilepsy Foundation New England. So the reason why I initially first joined uh, the Epilepsy Foundation was because when I was diagnosed with epilepsy, I was a teenager, I was in high school, I didn't know a lot about the condition and the fact that I never even really heard of epilepsy before and that none of my friends or family really knew anyone with epilepsy. I felt the need to kind of raise awareness about it because the more you know about something, the less scary it is. And also it gave me the chance to meet other people who had the same condition as me. And we've been so grateful for um, all that you've contributed to the foundation. And I know when you were a little girl, it was your dream to become a news anchor and your dream came true. Um, can you tell us about your career? Yeah, of course. So right now I'm at NBC 10 in Providence and I'm a weekend morning anchor, weekday morning reporter and also special projects reporter three days a week. So it's my dream job in so many ways because like you mentioned, I've wanted this for such a long time since I was uh, much younger, probably in middle schools when I first started thinking about broadcast journalism. And um, it's definitely a strange type of schedule, as you know. So uh, my alarm goes off at 1.15 to 1.30 on weekdays and 2.15 to 2.30 on weekends. And since I have epilepsy, that means I have to get a lot of sleep because sleep deprivation is one of my triggers. But I found a way to balance it out where I go to bed very early in order to wake up early. And I love what I do, so it's worth it. I think waking up at 1.15 is a little bit extreme early. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like when 5 a.m. is sleeping in, then something's wrong. <laughs> I know you're so, uh, you're so passionate about the work you do, and I know I enjoy seeing you um, in the mornings with your newscast, so I, I appreciate many people must um, really enjoy seeing your smiling face in the oh, morning. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Of course. Um, so in terms of you know, accomplishing your career goals, being a person living with epilepsy, was there a time that epilepsy stood in the way of your career goals? I mean, can you tell us about that? Yes, and this is something I talk about often because I don't want this to hold anyone else back if it does happen to anyone else. When I was in college, um, I was on a new medication and as you know, many epilepsy medications, they make you groggy, they make you tired, you feel out of it, um, you just don't feel like yourself. So I went to my neurologist and I told him this and I was saying, I can barely keep my eyes open during class, let alone, you know, do the work after class. And his first, the first thing that he said was to drink more coffee. And I was, you know, coffee's not an answer when it's a medication that I cannot not take that's doing it to me. So then he said, well, realistically, if you're this tired, maybe you should find a different career because obviously TV news is very demanding or drop out of college. And I feel like right at that moment is when I said that there's no way I'm letting either of those things happen and that this has been my passion, my dream for such a long time. And if anything, I think his negativity is what motivated me to be where I am today. So I ended up switching neurologists. I got a new one at Mass General Hospital in Boston who was fantastic. Um, he switched my medications, we figured it out, and a few months later I started feeling like myself again, started getting good grades again, and now it obviously all worked out because I am where I am today. And it's your story of self-advocacy is so important that you're listening to your instincts and sticking to your guns, and I'm so glad that you were able to find new answers and accomplish your career goals. It's such an inspirational story. Um, and, and you've been very open and, and vocal about your epilepsy, whereas some people tend to be less open, especially right. in a position like you have, which is public and lots of people know and follow you. Uh, what, what makes you feel like you want to be open and you want to be an advocate in the epilepsy community? So I wanted to be an advocate from the second I was diagnosed with this. And I feel like it is so important for people to talk about epilepsy. If somebody, for example, is diagnosed with a horrible disease like cancer, very rarely do you hear them not talk about it. And I don't think it should be any different for people with epilepsy because the more you talk about it, the more you normalize it. And that's so important, especially for children who, you know, if they have a seizure in front of their classmates, their classmates 
if they don't know what's going on, it looks weird. They look, you know what I mean? They don't look normal, but realistically they are normal. This is a condition that so many people have. And the more we talk about it, the more normal it becomes, the more mainstream it becomes. And you realize that you're not different after all, you're just living with a condition. So I would encourage everyone to talk about it because it doesn't just help you, it helps everyone else with it. Thanks, Tamara, and thanks for um, lending your very strong voice to the work we do. We so appreciate when people are able to find their strength and, and share their stories, because indeed, all the reasons you say it brings so much hope and strength to our community when, when more people are talking about it and educating our community. So thank you. Right, and it's not easy, but it's, it's worth it. And once you start talking about it, the more you talk about it, the less you know, weird it becomes. Scary, yeah. Uh, well, Tamara, I know, again, you've been involved with our walks in our community for a long time. Um, our Rhode Island Walk for Epilepsy, which has been going on for years and years and years, is coming up on Sunday, October 25th. And this year, it's a virtual walk. Uh, people can walk from their own homes, and we still hope they, they register and participate with us. Um, will you be participating in our walk this year? Yes, I actually just registered. I need to get my fundraising page going now. Um, but I love the fact that it's virtual because I know so many people who have a type of social anxiety around being in large groups like that and going to a walk where they don't know anyone or barely know anyone. So I think that if you've ever had any hesitation of participating in something like this, a large walk where it's surrounded by people, that this is the perfect opportunity to participate in a walk you're virtually surrounded by people, so no one can see you unless you want them to see you. And at the same time, you're raising awareness and raising money as well for epilepsy. And the more money we raise, the more money goes towards research, towards new medications. So walks like this are so critical. And I hope that since it is virtual, it'll encourage even more people to come out and do it. Yeah, we hope so too. And plus, we're coordinating this year with our event called our Hollow Hunt um, scavenger hunt and people can participate in a fun program on October 25th in Slater Park in Pawtucket as well as in Fort Adams in Newport um, and it's accompanying a, a week-long series of contests that will we'll have a party for on October 31st in the afternoon. So for people who want to venture into Slater Park and want to venture into Fort Adams on Sunday, October 25th, there's an opportunity to pick up a pumpkin and to pick up an EFNE face mask um, using social distancing, of course. So we hope that uh, people who want to at least see others from a distance can come and collect their pumpkin and their face mask. And it's a great walk. I, I mean, it's a great park. I uh, just brought my dog Milo there the other day. So we'll have to go back because he enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful park for sure. And our scavenger hunt will be in a very specific area. So people won't have to find things all over Slater Park yeah. Adams, but we'll, we'll make sure we give them a map Perfect. to participate. Um, great, Tamara. Well, as you know, one of our um, core missions at the foundation is to help young people affected by epilepsy. And I wonder, you know, thinking back on your diagnosis and your journey with living with epilepsy, what advice would you give to newly diagnosed you as a young woman? If me today was talking back to me when I was just diagnosed, I would say, first of all, it's going to be okay. And second of all, this is not going to run your life by any means. Because I feel like my biggest fear at the time was not really having epilepsy at the moment, but what this would mean for my future, because you hear so many scary things at first. But little did I know then that everything I went through made me so much stronger of a person and made me so much more determined of a person to really chase after my goals. I don't think I would have the determination that I have today if it wasn't for my diagnosis. So it's weird to say that having epilepsy was a blessing in disguise, but I think in many ways it was. And any situation like this, I really think it's how you take it and how you um, persevere through it. So I would tell myself that it's everything's going to be okay. Keep your head up and this won't run your life. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for sharing that inspirational story. And thanks again for all you do for your advocacy and education and volunteerism with Epilepsy Foundation New England. And thanks for taking this time with me today to share your story even more broadly. We really appreciate you and, um, and we'll see you on October 25th. Virtually, yes. Happy to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Tamara.